حس This morning's message I believe is going to be a very timely message from God based upon the current situation that we find ourselves in not only in our nation but nations around this world currently we have in our nation alone over 170,000 people have lost their loved ones to this pandemic and it has to be stopped and we hope very soon this morning I'm going to be talking to you about the greatest doctor that there ever was and ills and ills to come they call him Jehovah Rapha the Lord that heals me and he will heal you our scripture foundation for the message this morning is coming from the book of Matthew the 15th chapter verses 30 to 31 and the word of God reads and great multitudes came unto him having with them those that were lame blind dumb maimed, maimed and many others and cast them down at Jesus' feet and he healed them insomuch that the multitude wondered when they saw the dumb to speak the maimed to behold the lame to walk and the blind to see and they glorify the God of Israel let us pray dear God in heaven it's us again your children we have come God we have assembled ourselves together again to hear a word from you Father God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you open up our understanding today that we might hear what thus saith the Spirit of the true and living God, what it says to the church. Speak now, Holy Spirit. We are listening. Amen. Amen. The message this morning so listen carefully will be in the form of a prayer to God asking for a healing in accordance with God's word that's important as it is with most things in life there are comparatives you have good you have better and we have best these comparatives can also be spiritual pertaining to that which is spiritual to determine our spiritual development our spiritual growth in the Lord good better or best relative to prayer we can say for example it is good for us to pray it is even better when we pray every day and it is best when we pray the way God wants us to pray we cannot and you can look for yourself. We cannot find anywhere in the New Testament where Jesus, who was the ultimate 
teacher. The epitome of a teacher. We can't find anywhere where he taught his disciples to preach. Hallelujah. But he did teach them how to pray. Glory to God. Matthew chapter 6. We can see that. The best way. The best way to pray to God. Is to say to God in prayer. What he said to you. For you to put God in remembrance of his spoken word. The message this morning is a template. The message this morning is a model prayer for healing. But this prayer, even though this morning is on healing, can be modified for any situation, problems, tribulation, that you might be having in your life. Hmm. It appears a very famous minister in our time said that the God of the universe will not get, in, will not get involved in the affairs of men on earth except somebody pray. Mm. Oh, God, I felt that. Mm. Glory be to God. Now, without further ado, let me, let me begin this prayer. This is a model prayer. First of all, when we come to God, we must come to God acknowledging God as our Father. We tell him, Father God, it's me, God. I come before you. What gives you the right to call him Father? What gives you the right to even come before this holy God? We have a right to because he told you to. Glory be to God. Let's look at it. Hebrews. Chapter 4, 16 say, let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in the time of need. That's your ticket to come before the heavenly father. Glory be to God. Then we pray next. Tell God, Father, we praise you this day and we praise you every day. Why should we tell him that? Psalms 104 said, we will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. We will enter into his courts with praise. His praise shall continually be in our mouths. Glory be to God. Psalms 34 and 1 say, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Glory to God. Remember this now. When you come into the throne room of grace, it is always best that you precede your coming with praise with thanksgiving and then get down and worship the God of the universe before you make any request of him. Amen. Now, on with this prayer for healing. The next thing you want to do, you want to tell God. You tell God, you say, Father God, it was you that carefully designed every organ, gland, and system in this body. Father God, it was you, God, that gave each system, organ, and gland in my body their task to perform. God, I ask you, in the name of Jesus, help each organ, gland, and system in my body 
to perform the task that you have given it in Jesus name. Glory to God. Put God in remembrance. Tell God, God, you made me. You said, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Why I say that? Psalms 139, 14 say, I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works. And that my soul knoweth right well. I can't put every scripture up there. Otherwise we'll be here for two hours. So there are some scriptures I'm speaking out to you. And I give you what the scriptures are. The next thing we want to do in our prayer of healing. We want to tell God. Father God. Listen. You said. How many parents in here? How many parents in here? Glory to God. When you tell your baby, son or daughter, you make them a promise. And your son or daughter comes back to you and say, Daddy, you told me, you told me, you told me that if I be good, you're going to take me to Burger King's. When that baby comes to you and puts you in remembrance of what you told him, no hell or high water can stop you from fulfilling what you told that child because you got a reputation to uphold. Can somebody say amen? Then Father God is our heavenly Father. The same thing he will do when you put him in remembrance of what he said unto you. Amen. Glory to God. So, Father God, tell him now, you said that I have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. Matthew 16, 19. And I will give you, give unto you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And that whatever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. See, he gave us that. Now you tell him, Father God, with the power that you have given me this day, now faith. How many of you know it's now faith? Not tomorrow's faith. It's today's faith. It's now faith. Not tomorrow's faith. Now faith is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow's faith is the gospel of Satan. Tell God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, I declare then my body is your temple. What gives you the authority to tell God that? 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20 says, What? Know ye not that the body, your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own. For ye were brought with the price. Therefore, glorify God in your body, and in your spirit, which are God's. So God got an investment in us. We are his heritage. He wants to see us well. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Then in your prayer, you ought to say something like this to God. Hmm. Father God, I choose to glorify you with this body that you've given me. I bind God any sickness or disease that has been trying to attack my body. I command it to flee in the authority that you have given unto me in the name of Jesus.
so that I may present unto you, God, a beautiful, healthy body. You know, when I was sick, suffering cancer in 2001, listen to me now, I got something here. In 2001, struggling and fighting for my life. One of the things that kept me going was to remember God from the past. I used to see myself, Clarence, lying in that hospital hurting all over. I used to see pictures of myself when I was in basic training in Fort Lewis, Washington, running with combat boots on for three months, weighing 120 pounds, full of health and vibe. Glory be to God. You see the vision? You see the vision? Hallelujah. And it shall come to pass. Blessed be the name of our God. So God, I choose to glorify you with this body. Hallelujah. Now you tell him. Tell him, say, Father God, you have said that through Jesus' sacrifice, we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. What gives you the authority to say that to God? Galatians 3, 13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Being made a curse for us. For it is written, curse is everyone that hangeth on a tree. When Jesus hung and died on Calvary's cross, under the law, the curse was sickness and death. When Jesus hung and died on the cross at Calvary, sickness, death was all nailed to the cross. We can have healing, wholeness, live in him because of his death. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. So we have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Now you want to tell God, tell him, it's a choice whether or not you want to receive that redemption or not. It's a choice. Tell God, I choose. I accept your redemption that you have given unto me at the cross in the name of Jesus. What we declare, what we accept by choice, we speak through our mouths. Hallelujah. I declare that no weapon that is formed against me shall prosper any longer. You have to speak that with your mouth. Hallelujah. Isaiah 54, 17 gives us the authority to tell God that. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. And every tongue that shall rise against thee in the judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the saints of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. Amen. Now I want to tell God, Father God, you said in your word, you have promised me in your word that you will restore me to help and heal my wounds. Why? Because we serve you. You said you would bless our food and take sickness away from us. Why? That ye may serve the Lord your God and he shall bless thy bread and thy water and I would take sickness away from you. Glory to God. When God delivers us when God takes care of us, when God heals us, let us not forget to return unto him and say, Lord, we thank you. 
God, we praise you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God will always keep his word. For he cannot lie. Amen. Exodus 23 through 25 is our authority to say what I just said. And ye shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water and will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast thou young nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. In other words, sickness ain't going to take you out of here before he's ready. He will fulfill your days. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. You're looking at somebody, I'm a living witness. <laughs> if Satan had his way, I would have been gone on the top of a bunker in Vietnam on June the 2nd of 1970 at 2 o'clock in the morning. But I'm still standing. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm. Mm. Proverbs 4 and 22 talks about listen closely to his word. Did I, did I skip you up there? Let's go back one. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ears unto my sin. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are what? They are life unto those that find them. And they are what? They are help to all their flesh. There's healing in the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. You know, it amazes me, Reverend. When we are sick in our bodies, this is not to beat anybody up. I go to doctors too. Thank God for doctors. But we'll go to the doctor that we've never met before in our lives. And we have this man to write us a prescription for a chemical to put in our bodies that we don't know what it might do. And he said, take it three times a day for two weeks. And we do that religiously like he say. But yet we have a problem when it comes to taking God's medicine and using his prescription. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what I like about God's prescription, which is his word? <laughs> there are no side effects. You can take it as often as needed. Somebody say amen to that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell God in your prayer, Father God, I don't care what the doctor's report say. We will believe your report. Father God, your report says I'm healed. I believe your report. It does not mean that you might not have pains and aches in your body. That's not what it means. But we serve a God who is pleased by faith. Even though I don't feel it. Even though I don't see it. God, I believe. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. We believe your report. What gives me the authority to tell God that? Come on. Praise God. Romans 3 and 4. I chose the New, Le New Living translation for this. Whoa, what are we at here? There it is. Of course not. Even if everyone else is a liar. That's why we're going to believe God's report. God is true. 
as the scriptures say about him, you will be proved, you, God, will be proved right in what you say. You will win, God, your case in court. Amen. Somebody say amen to that. Thank you, God. Father God, help me. Help us to believe your report more than we believe the doctors, more than we believe the symptoms that we feel. Help us, God, to stand on your holy word today and every day in the name of Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory to God. Let me move. Right now, today, Father God, I confess. See, confession is unto salvation. Salvation is not just being saved from uh, uh, hell. Salvation is all-encompassing, according to the Greek word for salvation, which is a word they call sozo. Nothing missing, nothing lacking in every area of my life. Salvation that Christ gave each of us, intended for each of us. Thou shall be saved. Thou shall be sozo. Nothing missing, nothing lacking, mind, soul, and body. Mm. Tell God. And talk to yourself. I talk to myself sometimes. I talk to my body. What I'm preaching today is, I do what I'm preaching. Praise God. Anything that's out of balance in my body, right now itself is dying. Because you, God, have promised in your word, I shall live and not die. That I may declare the reason why God saved you and pulled you back, he got a purpose for it. That I might declare your glorious words. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. What gives you the authority to go to God and tell God that you will live and not die? Next scripture, please. Psalms 18, 17, King James. I will live, I will not die, rather, but live, and will proclaim what the Lord has done. Anybody here, God, has done a marvelous work in your life? Huh? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Remembering God gives you confidence and boldness for what we are enduring now during this pandemic. When I look back over my life, I don't know about your life, when I see all the hills and all of the mountains and all of the valleys that God has already brought me through, I can lay my head back in full confidence and boldness. And say, God, you did it before. God, you will do it again. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you got to talk to yourself. Did you know that? David talked to himself. He sure did. Why art thou damn downcast, O oh my soul? Have faith in God. Whither? Shall I go from your presence, God? If I make my bed in hell, lo, you are there. If I go to the deepest part of the ocean, lo, God, you are there. Jehovah, Shema. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mm. God is good, isn't he? Hmm. Slide, uh, let's see. What I'm
preaching or teaching about this morning is not easy to do. I'll be the first to say that. It takes effort. It takes enduring faith. It takes putting up a good fight. Hmm. I'm a living witness. Listen. I'm a living witness. It'll work if you work it. Praise the name of the Lord. Tell God. Say, Father, I thank you that my light breaks forth as the morning and that my health is going to spring forth speedily. Why do I say that? Isaiah 58 and 8 says, Then your light will break forth like the dawn, and your healing will quickly appear. Then your righteousness will go before you, and the glory of the Lord got your back. The glory of the Lord will be your real God. Glory to God. How many of you know that the God that you serve is a God of suddenlies? Mm -hmm, that's right. Suddenly means unexpectedly. From out of nowhere, boom, there it is. No advance warning is given that it is about to happen suddenly. We serve a God of suddenly. Listen, just because God may be silent doesn't mean he hasn't heard your prayers. Nor does it mean that he's not doing anything about your requests. We may not see him and what he's doing. You may not feel just like, or you may feel rather, Sometimes that you are just waiting for nothing. But God is a God of suddenly. He may not come when we want him. But he's always on time. Now, now, know this. God loves suddenly. <laughs> and these are Three New, New Testament scriptures, he showed up suddenly. There are many, many more. I just got three. In Luke 2 and 13, it says, suddenly there was a host of angels praising God. Acts 2 and 2, suddenly there came from heaven the sound of a rushing mighty wind. Acts 16 and 26, when Peter and Silas were in jail, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately the doors flung open and everyone's bands were loose. God of suddenly. Mm. Absolutely nothing can make God more real to you or to me faster that when you see God show up suddenly on your behalf, hallelujah, glory to God. When you, show, when you see God show up suddenly and reverses everything around in your favor, glory to God. Nothing makes God more real then when you feel like you are trapped on every side, no way out, seemingly no way to escape, it appears that the devil has the upper hand and that he's winning. And all of a sudden, God shows up, puts the enemy, the devil, to shame and delivers us out of all of our troubles, God of the suddenness. Amen. Amen.
Praise the name of the Lord. The 747 getting ready to come in and taxi to move into the location for disembarkment. <laughs> Amen. Did you know God likes to break in when you didn't expect him to? We serve a God, listen now, don't take this the wrong way. God likes to show off sometimes. Hallelujah. Yes, he likes to show off sometimes. Listen, the Bible says, Second Chronicles 19 and 9 says, the, eye, the eyes of the Lord are going to and fro in the earth, seeking to show himself strong towards those whose hearts are perfect toward him. See, he's looking to show out. He's looking for faith in him. Glory to God. Now, let me make this disclaimer right quick, reverence. And everybody, sometimes I get excited. The hand clap stuff. I, I don't know where it comes from. It's just something that God gave me. To, I. So if you're not used to that, hang in there. Because every time, I, every time the, the Reverend uh, Clayton put me up here, you might hear a little bit of that. Amen. And I don't really apologize for that. It's something that God gave me. Praise God. Amen, amen. Amen. Hmm. Are any of you acquainted with our sudden, suddenly God? Throughout the Bible, our God has intervened suddenly in the middle of horrific circumstances as well in daily lives. God loves to do things quickly and suddenly because there will be no doubt, no debate as to who it was that caused the breakthrough to take place in your life. God can do in one moment, in an instance, what a million men couldn't do in a lifetime. Wait upon the Lord. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. I had fainted, Psalms 27 said. I had fainted, except that I believe that I would see the goodness of my God in the land of the living. Wait, I say, upon the Lord. I don't know who I'm talking to. Glory to God. God has a never-ending supply of suddenly breakthroughs for all of his children. And God knows we certainly need them. Do you need wisdom? Do you need healing? Do you need strength, insight, or provision? Whatever your request, God has to answer. And he's willing, he's able, and he's ready to help. He knows exactly what it is you and I need. And he is a right now God. Glory and praise be to his name. Now, I'm going to close. I told you I'm coming in. I'm taxiing now. In closing, listen. I have given you today the template, the model of a healing, healing prayer. This prayer can be prayed individually or it can be prayed collectively. The prayer is based upon the word of God. This is God's prescription for our wellness. Please note that the words are to be spoken by the mouth three times a day until faith comes. Then once faith comes, faith must be maintain. If circumstances grow worse, double the dosage of the word. There are no harmful side effects as I mentioned earlier. God is a great physician. Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that heals me and heals you. God 
specializes in things that seem and appear to be impossible. If you got problems with your heart, God specializes. If you got problems with diabetes, God specializes. If you got problems with arthritis, God specializes. Are you here? I don't have to find a doctor for each one. He specializes in each and in every area. Glory to God. Blessed be his name. God cannot heal us unless we claim what he said. Oh, Jesus. What he says he has already done. There's nothing new under the sun. Glory to God. God wants us to pray what already exists in heaven to come on earth. Is there any sickness in heaven? No crying, no dying. We read the model prayer, Matthew chapter 6. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Glory to God. Amen. To obtain what is in heaven, God's way, is that we pray to bring it about. There's no other way. You cannot bring what's in heaven to earth without prayer. Prayer is God's way. Amen. We must pray according to God's word. Last scripture, John chapter 5. 14 to 15, I'm closing. And this is a confidence that we have before him. If we ask anything according to his will, well, what is God's will? God's will is in God's word. If we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, and whatever we ask, we know that we already possess what we have asked of him. Amen.